Hi, my name is Mike Sincere. I'm one of the faculty here at UT Southwestern in uh, the Department of Plastic Surgery. And the article that I'll be discussing today is Postoperative Complications in Prosthesis-Based Breast Reconstruction Using Acellular Dermal Matrix. Prosthesis-Based Breast Reconstruction is certainly one of the most commonly used forms of breast reconstruction available. Uh, and we've certainly seen this in recent years, um, especially with the advent of um, the use of acellular dermal matrix uh, for lower pole coverage and infralateral pole coverage. Their use has been increasingly popular for many advantages, which include the elimination of donor side morbidity, such as raising uh, serratus muscle flap or other local tissue. There's also a facilitated expansion of the lower pole, which can facilitate and uh, speed up postoperative expansion. There's also a possibility of a higher intraoperative fill initially during the expansion process, as well as faster time to uh, final expand or filling, and also the potential decrease for you know, capsular contracture. Despite its many advantages, there are some inherent risks of using a cellular dermal matrix, which can include infection. Therefore, the goals of this study uh, was to determine whether a cellular dermal matrix uh, used in the setting of immediate breast reconstruction increases uh, the risk of complications, uh, most notably infections. This study did find that the surgical complications were higher in the ADM group, and risk factors involved in that were the following. High BMI patients, high initial volume expander fill, high final volume of implant, and smoking. There are many strong points in this study. Overall, this manuscript is well written. The study is well designed. It provides a very comprehensive review of the literature. It's also the largest um, single academic institution uh, study looking at ADM versus non-ADM for post mastectomy breast reconstruction. I think another strong point of the study are the recommendations that the authors make regarding the use of ADMs, uh, which include the following. Caution should be used in high BMI patients, smokers, and pa surgeons should not be overly aggressive with the initial expander fill. Although there are many strong points in this study, there are shortcomings as well, and these include the following. This is a retrospective review, and this is acknowledged by the authors in their manuscript. The use of ADM is something that's relatively new, and there can be a bias in terms of uh, surgeon experience compared to the non-ADM group. And also there's some variability which can exist in terms of technique and experience amongst the, the different surgeons uh, that were involved in this study. Another major shortcoming of this study is that although both cohorts were well matched for comorbidities, the ADM group had twice as many smokers, had larger initial expander fill, and had larger mastectomy specimens compared to the non-ADM group. And these are risk factors which were associated with increased surgical complications overall. In conclusion, this is a well-designed study looking at the use of ADM versus non-ADM in the setting of breast reconstruct, immediate breast reconstruction. I agree with the authors that we do need a prospective, randomized, double-blind study looking at uh, the true impact of ADM uh, on complications uh, following breast reconstruction. Overall, well done.